Trap music is its own genre. Its style is usually based around drug dealing and finessing. Fans have embraced trap music from the start because they know it's coming from the originators. It began as early as 2003 and hasn't stopped evolving since. Atlanta birthed this style and has been leading the way for over a decade. It's produced more superstars than any other city, making it the rap capital of the world right now. In a place where drug dealing is predominant and a lot of people get stuck, trap music has provided a way out for many people, and Lil Baby is one of them. miss anything about your old life yeah no at all dominic jones was born december 3rd 1994 in atlanta georgia's zone four when he was just two years old his father left the home leaving his mother to raise he and his two sisters alone growing up in the south side's oakland city neighborhood his family was no stranger to poverty and government assistance watching his mom struggle and coming home to eviction notices on the door emotionally scarred him at a young age he never really struggled in school, but he did have a hard time staying out of trouble. As he was forced to grow up faster than the other kids around him, he found himself hanging outside with the older crowd more. When his mom would come looking for him, the older guys would tease him by calling him Baby, and the nickname eventually stuck. With the music scene in Atlanta booming, Baby grew up listening to artists like Jeezy and Yo Gotti, and he drew inspiration to hustle from their music. Unfortunately at the time he was just a kid, and his hustle didn't involve making music of his own but rather robbing, stealing, and selling drugs to get by. When Baby was only 12 years old, he started experimenting with drugs like lean and playing dice on the block. He loved to gamble, and he was good at it. Looking for a way to make some money, he and a few friends also made a plan to rob a home in their neighborhood. But before they could even enter the house, the police happened to drive by noticing the suspicious activity, and they arrested them. He spent 10 days in a juvenile detention center before returning home to his family. For some people, getting arrested at a young age can change their mindset, forcing them to take a different direction in life. But for Baby, this didn't phase him at all, and he continued to get more involved in the streets. Atlanta is a place where music, street life, and socializing on the block all coexist as one. Because of this, it's a high possibility growing up here, you'll meet someone later down the road who will be successful in these avenues. For Baby, one of those people was Jeffrey Williams, who we know as Young Thug. The two met in grade school and later went to high school together, but at the time he didn't know how impactful this friendship would be. Before he could complete high school though, he eventually dropped out in the 10th grade for too many suspensions and not showing up. Still looking for a direction in life, he pursued what he knew best, hustling. He was making money and building connections throughout the city, which only inspired him more to become a big time drug dealer. With the lifestyle and money inevitably came the consequences as well. He spent his 16th and 17th birthdays in and out of jail for probation on drug and gun charges. While on probation, he tried to lay low for a while, but he always found a way to justify to himself that he needed to hustle. It's just who he was. One day he asked his sister for $20 and left the house. She recalls him coming back seven days later and finding $100,000 cash in his room. He was addicted to the hustle, and for him, it was paying off. While he was back in the streets again, he spent a lot of time in studios, usually just kicking shit, but this would put him around people he had known for years who were making names for themselves in music. Coach K and P, the CEOs of QC The Label, would be in the same studios, and after hearing the stories Lil Baby would tell, they would encourage him to rap and tell his story. But because he was making so much money in the streets, it was hard for him to fathom making more money than he already was. So he continued trapping. Now I was like, I ain't see it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, it ain't make sense to me at all. I was in the trench and trying my best to be a kingpin. Crushed the whole last year. Now it's time to go again. In 2014, his charges were catching up to him though. And because he violated his probation, he was facing up to two years behind bars. He fired the initial lawyer on this case and got a new one who managed to get him only six months in a program. He only managed to stay for 20 days before fighting another guy over racial slurs. Because he failed to complete the program, he was given his initial sentence of two years in prison. While Baby was locked away, some of the other inmates were old friends and cousins of his who had been given much longer sentences. 
Being behind bars for two years and seeing some of his peers serving life made him feel appreciative and it changed his perspective. On the outside, things were changing as well. Young Thug was blowing up to new heights. Coach K and P were establishing their QC the label and brought the Migos with them. Seeing the success they were reaching, Baby got to thinking about what he needed to do when he got out. He served the full two years and was released in 2016. Initially, he dabbled in the streets again, but he was finally considering other possibilities. Of course, rapping was one of them. He started going to the studio here and there, but was struggling to find his sound. Eventually, he managed to record two full songs, and when his friends heard what he did, he got encouragement to keep going. Young Thug was one of his friends who heard his potential, and even offered to pay him to stay in the studio and not go back to the streets. Seeing the dedication and work he was putting in at the studio, Coach K and P once again approached Baby, offering to manage him this time. With two huge hip-hop managers now behind him, they could strategically plan out his career. Even though I ain't the outside, ain't gonna die, They started collecting songs for a mixtape over the next six months, but they held off on releasing any singles as part of their plan. Because of his street credibility and his close ties to QC and Young Thug's YSL, he now had access to beats and features from credible artists. With this many cosigns, he knew his first project would be different than anyone who came before him. Perfect Timing was released April 14, 2017, and blew up almost immediately. The tape featured Lil Yachty, Young Thug, Gunna, and Young Scooter, who were all crazy features to have on a debut project. Regardless of the features though, Lil Baby's sound alone proved the massive potential he had. As if this tape wasn't enough buzz already, Lil Baby prepared to outwork all his competition. He made a promise to follow this up with 5 more projects within 1 year. That's a big goal to accomplish as most artists on average drop one mixtape and one album a year, if that. Back to back to back mixtapes and singles were popping up. Within six months of dropping music, it was hard not to see his name in your playlist or your newsfeed. He had dropped so much music in a short period of time, it almost made it seem as if he had been around for years. And although he had songs buzzing, he still had a lot to prove. So like my last three projects, every project, you know what I'm saying? I, I've got bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. Then my last project with the Drake, I got screaming big. <laughs> Going into 2018, the music industry was in a weird place. Artists were blowing up all over, but falling off just as fast. In order to stay relevant, some artists were doing anything to keep their clout. In reality, authentic music and consistency is all it would take to go mainstream and stay there. Lil Baby proved this throughout 2018, and it goes without saying his respect in the industry was coming fast, and other artists were taking notes of his work ethic. When Drake reached out, he sent him a beat to hop on, and that would turn into the song Yes Indeed. This was a huge turning point in his career to have one of the biggest artists in the world reach out to work. The song dropped in May, and for a lot of people it was their introduction to Lil Baby. Riding this massive wave, he dropped his debut album, Harder Than Ever, the same week. Although this was a huge moment for him, for some people getting a feature from Drake is the highlight of their career, and it can be hard to outshine that. For new fans tuning in, this was the big question, and Lil Baby knew that, but they couldn't have been more wrong. In October, Lil Baby and Gunna teamed up for their collaborative project, Drip Harder. The standout song, Drip Too Hard, would go platinum and the entire tape would go gold that same month. Once again, this was a massive milestone for someone who had only been mainstream for a few months and rapping for about a year. Despite being robbed of a spot on the 2018 XXL freshman list, Lil Baby had already managed to reach superstar status. This allowed him to take a break from dropping mixtapes every few months, allowing him to focus on touring and features. Taking over a year off from dropping projects, he still remained one of the most talked about artists. He returned in 2020 with his second album, My Turn. This would be his first ever number one tape, selling 197,000 copies its first week, and going three times platinum to date. These are some numbers that veterans in hip hop can't even achieve, leaving his mark in rap history. Although Lil Baby isn't the first artist from Atlanta to go from the streets to the stage, the manner and speed that he achieved this makes his story unlike most, and further proves that anything is possible with passion, hard work, and consistency. 
grow it like I write a book. I can make one phone call and get a thousand on the truck. Put it in my lifestyle. Then I had to switch it up. Put another million up like fuck and I'm gonna get it up. I was selling drugs when you had dreams of being on the court. I was supposed to be in school, but I was getting out of court. Got this torch in my hood. Sounded like the city, y'all. Niggas acting like some bitches got me in the city, bro.